ASMR video. Today's ASMR video, um, I wanted to talk about friendship because I think friendship is very important. So, uh, I'm gonna read some facts about friendship and I got these facts from uh, newinterestingfacts.com. It's called 39 Psychological Facts About Friendship Most People Don't Know in 2023. Uh, now, I doubt I'm gonna be able to read all these or I'm gonna, you know, be able to read all these, but I just wanted to share some things because, like I said, I believe friendship is important and especially in today's age where, like, I feel like friendship isn't really taken as seriously as it should, so I'm really just gonna read these facts and then just give my perspective on friendship. Fact number one, having good friends is good for your health. Having a good a group of friends is good for your health and well-being. It comes with many benefits like improving your self-confidence and increasing your sense of purpose and belonging. Friends can also help boost your happiness, reduce the stress of everyday life, and help you overcome depression. And if you're going through a dramatic experience, like the death of a loved one, um, divorce, serious illness, or job loss, they can help you cope with that too. And I'm going to have to say I agree with this 100%. Um, because if you have a good, I want to wrap that you have a good group of friends, like me growing up, since I'm an only child, right? I never a lot of brothers and sisters, but me growing up, uh, I met my best friend in my church community, and like being in that community and growing up really did teach me. Like my best friend literally taught me how to have self confidence in myself, like how to talk to like girls and like just having that sense of purpose and belonging. Like like with articles I said, I wonder and agree because like when I was in the church, I really felt like I was part of a community, and it really helped because like. You know, without that, who knows? Who knows? I would have turned out probably weirder than I already am. Like, I mean, I'm already kind of weird, but I probably would have turned out a lot weirder. So, I definitely agree that um, having friends, like, really helps. And then, like you said, when you go through everyday life and stuff, uh, having a friend that's there for you really helps. Uh, so I definitely agree with that and this goes on to kind of like the second fact where it says people overcome illnesses better when they have friends When faced with a major illness people who have a strong support system are more likely to survive It's also known, shown that people who have a good group of friends live longer And I believe this too because uh, in 2022 For me, I went through a lot <laughs> I went through a lot of things um like mental wise and illness wise like i was in the hospital a lot I've, I've already made like a couple videos talking about that but one of the things i haven't said is like my best friend like i kept in contact with my best friend and um him just encouraging me to like you know get through get through and stay strong and like just encouraging me really helped out because like i talked to him like a good amount like my best friend and i don't live really close like we live literally on opposite uh, sides of the country but, you know, talking to him and calling him and having a conversation with him really helped. Um, I don't know, it just, it helped. You know, along with obviously having my family and stuff, just like the thing says, but just talking to my best friend, knowing that I had somebody out there that's like rooting for me and stuff also helps out. And that's what I feel like these first two points are kind of, kind of making, um, a point to say because it's like, yeah, well, if you got, when you're going through trials of life it really helps when you have a community support and you're not by yourself and you got people out there rooting for you because it's like life is already tough enough and you know a lot of people out here already feel alone so having a good friend i feel like really like helps when it comes to going through a lot of uh of life's trials and, and difficulties because you it's like you gonna go through some trials and difficulties but if you got somebody or a group of people out there to help me then hey it helps all right number uh fact number three hanging out with friends can make you look more attractive being out with a group of friends can make you appear more attractive this is known as the cheerleader effect that describes the phenomenon where people's faces look more attractive when they're next to other faces as opposed to when they're seen in isolation now i don't know i'm reading these i don't know how true these are because like some of these i can't comment and be like oh yeah this is true or not but like i said perfect if you have a good group of friends like yeah it can i, I can see how it can because like obviously if you're with people you're enjoying 
weight, I'm assuming you're gonna look more happy and look more up upbeat and have a more positive attitude compared to, I guess, when you're alone. So I can see how this can be like a true thing. Whether or not it is, I don't know. Uh, fact number four, animals have friends too. But what is the benefit of animals having friends, you may ask? Well, it's believed they form friendships similar reasons that humans do. It reduces their stress, leads to better health, and can help with their reproductive success. I mean, I agree with that, because, I mean, I've, I've heard all times where they're like, oh, you know, if your dog's acting up or you just get him a friend of your cat's acting crazy or whatever, get him a friend. So, like, I can see how that can 100% like be a thing and be true because people get friends for their dogs and cats and other animals, birds and stuff all the time. So, yeah, that's, that's not something out of the ordinary. Let's see, number five fact, your friend group size will stay the same throughout your life. It is likely that the average number of friends you will have will stay the same throughout the majority of your life. So whether you, you're someone who has a small social circle or a large one, that is likely to remain the same throughout your years. Um, I agree with this, but like I don't think that's the same for everybody because people change. But like I would say for me, that's mostly the case because I'm always the type of person where I like a small group of friends and not a lot of friends. And I've always been like that. I've always had anywhere from like two to like three friends at a time. And that's about it because I know for me, like when I am your friend, like I, I'm like invested in your life. So I'm in your business. <laughs> your business is my business. So for me, I can't have a bunch of quote unquote friends because I'm just like, you know, if I, I, I'm in your business, that's why for me, like, I've had a lot of acquaintances in my life, but I haven't had a lot of friends in my life. But I've definitely had a lot of acquaintances. Because I would say, even right now, you really have two, two really good friends. And I'm fine with that. For the most part, like, I'm, I'm good with having two good friends. I said, are there people I know that I'm, you know, acquainted with that I'm cool with? Yeah. But as far as, like, friends, like, a person, like, a friend is, um, I don't know when I say friend, like, I used a biblical definition of friend because <laughs> the Bible says a friend is somebody that will sacrifice their life for you. So, that's why I said, really, other than, like, my family, there's only two other people I can think in my life that I, I do that for. <laughs> so, like, um, that's why I'm, like, not one of those people that's, like, I'm not going to call everybody my friend because a lot of people in the world look about oh, that person my friend, that person my friend, that person my friend, but that person will betray you in a heartbeat. <laughs> Nah, bro, like, the two friends that I got, like, we've been through some stuff, we've been through some ride or die stuff, so, that's why I'm like, nah, I can really call those two people my friend. Uh, number six, you'll make nearly 400 friends in your lifetime, this is estimated that you'll make roughly 396 friends in your lifetime, while only a handful of last, I disagree 100%, like I said before, um, as somebody that keeps a small group of friends, nah, I think you'll make a, a lot of acquaintances in your lifetime, but I don't think you'll make a lot of friends in your lifetime, because obviously, like, now that I'm older, like, I've had quote-unquote friends that I had when, uh, I was in school and stuff, but 400, no way, no way, there's no way I believe you can make 400 friends in your lifetime, because as you become an adult, I feel like it's harder to be friends with people anyway, so I, I, I had to disagree with that one says number seven most friendships don't last very long people form many friendships during their life but generally only one out of 12 friendships are so close that they last a lifetime um, i can i can kind of see where this is coming from because um but like i said the two friends that i have one of them i've known since i was 11 years old my best friend i've known since 11 years old and this other guy i call him my brother but technically we took him in um when he was 18 and i've known him since literally 2013 so for 10 years um but i you know i have had other friends where you you'll be friends with people for a season like for example when you're a kid a lot of people you're friends with you're just friends with because you're in close proximity even if you're friends with years like i before my best friend i have now i had at least two other current best friends and the reason why i was best friends with them most of the time was because of i'm thinking about we were in close proximity of each other so i do believe and then when i was in college i had a group of friends it was literally me and two girls and one other guy and we were like a tight-knit group and then 
graduate college, we kind of kept in touch, but then we just kind of like faded away. You know, we went our separate ways. I don't have any beef with those people at all. Like, if I were to see them today, I'd be like, hey, yo, what's up? Like, nothing ever, you know, nothing ever changed. But like, I wouldn't say like we're super close friends anymore because we just kind of fell, fell off. And I feel like some people don't understand that some people are in your life for a season and that's okay. It's okay to have people in your life for a season when it comes to friendship, you know? Like I said, my college friends, they fulfilled their purpose when I was in college. And trust me, I needed them when I was in college. Those were my homies in college. And I needed their friendship. And I'm glad I was friends with them. But now that I'm not in college and I'm, you know, I'm different, you know, I'm a, I've changed. Like, you know, it is what it is. And like I said, sometimes it's just you have friends for a season. It is what it is. So that's why I said kind of agree. I kind of agree with that fact, but not 100%. Let's see, fact number eight, when it comes to friends, quality over quantity is more important. The quality of your friendship is much more important than the number of friends. Just because someone has more friends than you doesn't mean they have more meaningful relationship. Yeah, that, I mean, that's what I've kind of been saying. Just because a person's like, oh, I got 20 friends. Do you really got 20 friends? Because how many of those people will trade you at the uh, drop of the hat? You know what I'm saying? Like I said, the two friends that I got, I've known for, like I said, minimum 10 years or more. And uh, like I said, I'm not one of those people that I need a ton of friends because I'm an introvert. Like I said, if I'm introvert and how I am, when you're friends, when I'm friends with you, I'm in your business. So that's why I definitely, I don't like a lot of friends anyway. So I do definitely agree that quantity is more important than quality because just having a bunch of friends, it's hard to keep up with them and, and know everything they're going through and all their business anyway. So 100% agree with this. Number nine, work friends are very important. Having friends in your workplace makes your job more enjoyable. It also makes you more creative, happy, productive, and less likely to seek out new jobs elsewhere. A Gallup poll from 2018 found that those who have work friends are more likely to be engaged in their jobs, delivering high quality work, and have better sense of well-being. Also, when faced with difficult situations, job employees who are more having work friends display lower levels of stress. I 100% will agree with this. Um, because, man, if you work, especially if you work at a job you do not like, it is one. It's a lot easier if you work at a job you do not like to have some to have somebody at your job that you like and that you be cool with. And even if you work at a job that you do like, it makes it a lot better um, when you when you work with somebody you, you like. An example is uh, when I was in college, I had a library job that my one of my the three college friends that I had. She basically is the reason why I had that job. And most of the time in that library job, you work by yourself now. I enjoyed that library until this day. It's the best job I ever worked. My bosses I liked, and I liked literally every single one of my coworkers except for one. And the one person I didn't particularly, I didn't like, I didn't hate her or anything. I just didn't care for her. But I remember, I think I, there's two times where I worked with my friend, and man, that was some of the best times. Just working with her, just chilling with her. It was so cool. When I worked at the home hotel, um, in my home, all right, hotel, in my hometown, I had, uh, like, Basically, there's one work friend. She was really cool. Uh, she was an older lady, and she was like my go-to work because we both worked in the shift. And I, like I said, it made things a lot better to work with her, even though that job was a good job and my bosses were cool. Like when we had stressful situations and stuff with the guests and stuff, it made it a lot better to work. And even when I worked out of state and I went to live in Ohio and I worked in the shift, and my evening shift uh, partner was really cool, and I'm glad I worked with her because man. It was, it was like, even the shift's not hard, but just working at a job was kind of rough. And so, having, you know, knowing, I was like, okay, well, I'm at least coming to work to, with my friend. We're going to hang out. We're going to chill. We're going to have a good time. And it was her. And then a security card that was really cool. Like, all three of us, like, were really cool work friends. So, I 100% agree with that. Um, and I do kind of agree, like, when you have people to work, you're less likely to look for somewhere else. But... You know, depending on how bad the job is, you know, if the job's really good, that's very true. You, I feel like you're more likely to stay there than if the job's bad uh, and you don't have any friends. So, uh, fact number 10, friendships need to be matched in their give and take. Study shows that relationships are more likely to last if both members feel like they're getting as much out of the relationship as they're putting in. So, if you're always the one who has make plans to meet up with your friends and they're not putting as much effort their friendship is more likely to fizz it out i mean yeah that i feel like that kind of goes to say with like anything like 
in friendships or relationships if you're always the one putting in more than the other person then obviously like they're not a good friend so like obviously yeah it's gonna it's gonna fizzle out same thing with like relationships if you're in a relationship and you're always putting more effort into the person and trying to meet their needs and they're not doing the same they're not trying to put effort to meet your needs obviously the relationship's not gonna work out like it might last for a certain amount of time but yeah eventually it's not gonna work out and those are what we call ladies and gentlemen bad friends because like the thing says you need to you need to have a give and take um now i will say that um the difference between like men and women and men when it comes to relationships sometimes like you know you don't have to put in a lot of effort for to maintain a relationship or a friendship depending on like depending on your relationship like i said if you both live like super far away like a call or text maybe every month or every couple of months might just be enough and the friendship won't fizzle out whereas some friendships like i said you gotta see each other a lot of times you know especially because i feel like with women that's how it feels with women they're like oh we gotta see each other all the time we gotta be around each other and see each other and, and be in each other's lives where i feel like men a lot of times are kind of just like nah bro like we can text each other we can call each other every once in a while and we'll be fine because that's how it is me and my best friend we don't call and talk all the time but we're still very super close to friends and when we 